Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the default security policy actions with Unified Policies Learning Byte. All right, so you might ask yourself, what is this about? Well, it's about how we are going to handle app ID matching. With app ID matching, typically takes a few packets to determine what the application is. Well, you might ask yourself, well, what do we want to do with that traffic that hasn't matched yet? And what we can do is we can do something with that traffic that has been matched yet. And there is the pre-ID default policy, which allows us to specify what we want to do. And what we can do is we can log the session, session init or session closure. And we can also change session timeout values for these sessions that happen before the app ID matching completes. All right, here is our example. In the example, we have a user that is connected to the VSRX1 device, then that connects to the internet. And what's gonna happen here is we're gonna have multiple unified policies that are configured that matches the user traffic before the app ID happens. So we're gonna have, and I'll show you in the CLI, we'll have multiple policies that other than the dynamic application will be exactly the same. And so what's gonna happen here is we're gonna configure the pre-ID default policy to log session creation and session close for those sessions that app ID hasn't completed on. So let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of VSRX1 and get started. All right, here is the CLI of VSRX1. So let's go ahead and jump into configuration mode. Have a look at the security policies. And here we have security policies that have the exact same matching criteria except the dynamic application. That means that the user traffic is going to match on all these policies until the application identification engine can determine the dynamic application that is in use. So as we talked about beforehand, that means that there's going to be some traffic, some sessions that need to be created before that app ID engine can determine the dynamic application in use. And so in this instance, we want to log those sessions so we can keep track of those sessions and what's happening. So what we need to do here under security policies, we need to set the pre-ID default policy, and then we need to set the then option and we have a few different options here I want to talk about. We have the log, which we're going to be using. Then we also have session timeout. And if we look at session timeout, we have some different values we can set. For example, we can set the ICMP or ICMP6, OSPF, everything else, which is others, TCP, UDP. We can set those timeout values. And what this allows us to do, say that we want those timeout values to be very quick because we haven't done application identification on those sessions yet. So we can set it really quick for that, like as low as four seconds, or we could set that really long session timeout values if necessary. So we're able to have a little bit of granularity here as far as the session timeout values go for sessions that need application identification done on them, but we haven't been able to identify the session yet because we haven't received enough packets. So we're not gonna worry about the session timeout with this, we're just gonna worry about logging. And we're gonna do session init, so the session creation and session close. So when the session ends and you can see here in the pre ID default policy, that's what we have configured. We're logging session init and session close. And let's go ahead and commit that. And then let's go ahead and jump to the user device. Okay. Here is the user device. Let's go ahead and open Chrome and this will open to my default page of juniper.net. All right. That's loaded completely. Let's go ahead and jump back to the VSRX one CLI. All right. Here is the VSRX one CLI. And we're logging these session init and session closures for the pre-ID default policy. So let's go ahead and look at the log messages. And we can see a few different things here. I use the match in con so we can see log messages that match inconclusive. Okay, so we can see that we do have some messages or rather some log messages that are being recorded. And so let's look at this last log message here. We can see that it's a session close message. We can see that it's from the user, which is 10.1.1.100, going to an IP address on the internet that is the Juniper website. It's using port 443, so we know we're using HTTPS. And we see Junos HTTPS as the application in use now. We don't know the dynamic application. This is Junos's figuring based on the port information. And then we have the policy we're actually using. We're using the pre-ID default policy. We can see that there. We see the zone users to internet. And then we can see that the dynamic application is marked as inconclusive because we don't know yet. 
So since we specified that, okay, we're going to log this type of traffic when it's not identified yet with app ID, this is what we're doing. And so with this, we're able to keep track of the sessions that haven't been identified yet using the app ID engine. So that brings us to the end of this learning bite. We discussed the default security policy behavior with unified policies, and we demonstrated how to configure the default security policy when multiple unified policies are present. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.